When you're building mobile solutions, sometimes you are faced with the reality that some data is only available in legacy formats or maybe even only HTML tables. What I want to show you today is how you can uh, take data from any HTML web page um, and parse that using the very powerful HTML uh, normalizer and Xcuri processing capabilities of Alto Mobile together, turn it into really useful XML data and then plot it and do some calculations with that data. Uh, as an example, we're going to take the uh, consumer price index from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and uh, we have the data here available as an HTML table. We can look at the source real quick um, in our browser and you will find uh, the HTML table somewhere near the bottom here. Um, so we can extract all these elements from the table. Uh, we can easily identify that particular table because it actually says year here in the beginning. So we'll use that as a data point when we construct our Xcuri. So let's get started in mobile together with this. Uh, obviously we will want to copy that URL. In mobile together, we're gonna start by creating a new design and we will start this new design uh, by adding a new page source. And in this particular case, we're gonna take an HTTP request to get that HTML data from the server. We will load that data on its first use, but we'll actually keep it on the mobile to get a server and rather than sending it to our client device, because we will only send the XML data that we build from it to the client. So the URL is going to be our URL, which is copied from the browser. And we're gonna parse this as HTML a powerful built-in HTML parser that normalizes the entire HTML for us so we can process it with Xcuri. Now, um, maybe we'll add a quick label here and call this the consumer price index. And then in order to build our Xcuri, we're actually going to simply start the simulator and build the Xcuri interactively. And as you can see here on the right hand side, mobile together already has all of our HTML data loaded right here. So we can go through that tree and see if we can maybe find that particular table. And there's actually two tables in here. Uh, the bottom one, the second one is the one that's interesting for us, which has all the actual CPI data here inside its body. And inside its T head element, it has all these row titles. So we'll uh, take a look at that as we build our XQE structure so that we can understand what kind of data we want to extract here. So we'll fire up the evaluate um, XPath and XQE expression dialog and switch over to the evaluator mode. Um, we already have the HTTP data loaded from the simulator and now we can experiment with building our X query expression. So we'll start with uh, HTTP one and simply grab any table from in there. And here's the two tables that we found here in the document. We already know that we want the second one, but we don't want to hard code that because the structure of the HTML might obviously change. So why don't we simply identify it based on the fact that it contains uh, a TH element um, with the label year in it. We can easily do that by adding square brackets. And then we say uh, anywhere in here, we can find a TH element that says year. Okay, now we are certain that we found the correct table. We can actually look into that table and see what we find in there. Um, for example, if we want to look into its T body, uh, and then into a TR row, and then maybe to the elements TD, you can see here, that's exactly the kind of data we want to extract. Now I want to do that in a very nicely structured way here in Xcuri. So I'm actually going to go back a few steps here and I will define a variable dollar table that I can then later reuse easily where I will capture that table that we've just identified. Now, in order to grab all those rows from that table and turn them into the years that we then further populate with different months, we're gonna do a simple loop statement here for a row inside that table. And we said it was inside a T body 
and then inside the TR we will now start building our year elements. So we will return an element year and that element year will have the following structure. As you can see here we already have those years populated now and what we want to add at this point in time is an attribute that we're going to call y for year and inside this attribute we now have to grab the information um, from this th element here. So our iterator for dollar row iterates over all of these tr elements here and we want to grab the th element here to get the year number. So we are already inside the dollar row and all we have to do here is grab the first th element. And in this particular case I just want to make sure that I grab only the first th element in case somebody else changes the structure of that HTML page later on. So that's our y attribute. And then we also want to add uh, a couple more attributes to each of these rows. Obviously one for each of the month in there. So one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that in addition to all of the monthly information, the table also contains annual and first half and second half of the year aggregate information that we don't want to grab. So we're going to simply iterate only over the values that are in these elements here. As you can see down here, those are these TD elements that we really want to grab. So we'll simply make a loop over the 12 months in the year. And for each month, we're going to simply construct a element in our XML tree. So here you can see all these month elements being created. And obviously each month needs a number. So we will add another attribute M that is simply going to be the number of the month. So now in each year element, we have a month element with the month number. And last but not least, we do the actual real work here, which is going to be uh, extracting the CPI number. And as you can see over here, this is going to be contained in the TD element of that TR row. Um, we extracted the year number from the TH element. Now we're going to extract it from the TD element and we're simply going to pick dollar row td element that is located at the index position dollar i. Perfect, that's looking pretty good. So here you can see for the first year 2004 we've extracted 185.2 is the first value. That's exactly what we have right here. If we scroll a little bit to the right side, second month is 186.2, third month is 187.4. That's exactly the right data. Perfect. Now the only thing we need to keep in mind at this point in time is that for the last couple of months in the current year there might not actually be any values contained in those cells in the table. So we want to test for whether or not that actually um, is the case. And we can do that very easily by saying um, if this particular value here is actually castable to a data type excess decimal, meaning it's an actual numerical value. In that particular case, we're going to do what we just discussed. We're going to create that attribute and otherwise we're not going to return anything. And it's of course castable as and not castable to my mistake. There we go. So now we will uh, extract the uh, CPI value only if it's actually a decimal number, otherwise we'll simply ignore it. So that's the SKU expression that we've just built uh, based on our HTML data and it's going to extract a very nice tree with all of that year and month data inside of XML elements. And in order to make sure that this is an actually properly formatted XML document, we need to wrap the whole thing into an outer element that we're simply going to call data. So this element data 
is going to wrap our entire document in one large XML element. And that's what we're going to return from our uh, XQuery statement. So all we have to do now is copy this entire XPath and XQuery expression and exit from the simulator. And we can then build our XQuery tree. We're going to add a new page source. This time it's going to be a new XQuery tree. This time we actually want to copy to the client because we're going to then use it for various selections there. And we can now paste our newly constructed XQuery expression right in here. And if we now uh, run the simulator again, you will see that there is a new XQuery tree here. And if we open that, here is our data element with all the year elements underneath and our perfectly cleaned up uh, CPI data extracted from the HTML and reusable for future use. In the last year, in 2014, we can also verify that the last couple of months don't have any CPI data in them yet, which is what we had achieved by making sure the expression is castable to a decimal. In order to use that in uh, our chart creation, we're going to select the overwrite XQ1 structure based on this tree option here, which will give us all of that structure information right here in our data source view. And we can now build our chart. So let's do that. We're going to drag a chart object into our design surface. We're going to associate the chart object with our uh, data from the XQ1 tree. And then we're going to start build our chart. Uh, we're probably going to do a line chart here because that makes more sense um, for the CPI data. And in our for each expression, um, we are simply going to find every month in our data. Um, that has a CPI element. That way we don't plot the months that haven't gotten any CPI data yet. And for our category axis, we probably want to use the year element at Y from our tree. And then we can actually add our series data here. Now, for the series XPath expression itself, we're going to simply grab the CPI value. And we're going to call that data CPI. And then last but not least, we can add some uh, restrictions on the value axis. Uh, we don't need to show the zero points in zero was in 1982. So we can show this data just from, I don't know, 100 to 250 with tick marks every 10 points. And um, with that, we should be able to run our simulator again. And here is some CPI data. Now, in this particular case, I probably want to go back to the settings and don't draw the connecting shapes. And there is a nice line for our CPI data. So we've extracted the data from uh, an HTML table, built our uh, XML tree here, and created useful data that we can now continue to process in our next video, where we will show you how to extract inflation rate information, as well as add date range selectors to the chart.